Now I'm going to clean the carbon from the valve and get them ready for grinding. Grinding means reface the valve seat and the valve face. So cleaning the valve, it's a little bit tricky because we just want to take the carbon from this area and this area, but we don't want to damage the face or the valve stem. So you gotta be careful and you don't want to use too much of a coarse cleaning tool, whether sandpaper or scraper, because you don't want to damage the valve. So we're going to just use some, maybe like an 80 grade sandpaper, 120, and give it a first cleaning and see how they come out. And remember, each time you take one out, you gotta always put it back in its position because they were unique. So I'm going to use the drill because you know the drill is a common tool you find in a lot of home or small garages rather than some of the other you know expensive method. So we'll use the drill and I'll go with a 80 sandpaper just to just to get the rough stuff off, but I won't you I won't press it too much to cut the valve, just to clean, especially the exhaust valve, clean the carbon off. For the apprentice, remember safety is the number one priority in doing this work. So you have to always practice safety first. So anything at all you do, always think about the safety aspect first before you start doing it. So that's why you see I have this mass because I don't want to inhale any other toxic material from the valve, the carbon. And also a lot of, sometimes a lot of small metal particles might get thrown up in the air, you don't want to inhale that stuff. And then I have the safety glass, just to protect my eyes, just in case anything should get loose from the valve, from the drill, my, at least my eyes are protected. So remember, never overstep, overstep the safety aspect. Always treat it with the utmost respect and never forget, never forget about practicing safety. The garage is a good place to work, but it can also be dangerous. And it also can have long-term effect on your health. So, you know, if you don't practice the proper safety measure, you can do things now and it don't affect you until 20 years later, 10 years, you know, when you retire, that time, you know, the, the unsafe stuff that you used to do creep up on you and become a problem with your health. So remember, safety is the number one priority. Let's get into cleaning the valve and we're going to start by putting in the valve in the drill. And the important thing with this part here, I use this drill that I lock with a key because I want to make sure I lock it to a certain tightness. I don't want it too tight and I don't want it too, you don't want it too tight and you don't want it loose. If it's too tight, you know, it can make impression in the valve and you know, you don't want anything whatsoever go on with the valve.
So that's our first clean there. And you can see all the carbon gone. Just a little bit in here, we'll get that out. But we can move to the next step and use a, a more higher grade sandpaper, like a 180, just to polish it. 180 would be good. I didn't come up on the stem because we don't want no material removed from here whatsoever and I didn't go on the, on the face neither so you notice it's still of that original look but runner nice and clean almost looking like a new valve this is the exhaust valve and normally these valves are very difficult for cleaning. You can see how much carbon built up. And it's not just built up, it's hard. So we'll have to use a poor sandpaper just to break the carbon up. And you can see how much carbon coming off. All the valves have been cleaned and removed all the carbon and now they're looking nice. Also the cylinder head, all the carbon has been removed from the ports and inside the combustion chamber. So now we're going to we're going to now we're going to grind the valves. And as normal, we rearrange the bench, clean it up a bit, and take out the necessary tool that we're going to need for this phase of the repair. So we have the valve compound, coarse, fine. We have valve stick. This is just an oil bottle, a regular engine oil bottle, and we cut it open just to use it as a cleaning container. And this we have a little bit of gas in it. And we have the oil can and the air on the valve. There's many ways to grind the valve, many different tools. But sometimes in this work we like to stick with tradition. It's not everything we go to the modern technology. So while some people would prefer to use a drill and grind the valve, and some will buy expensive material, um, expensive tool. I prefer use the valve stick. It's one of the original methods of grinding the valve. And in my opinion, it gives you the best finish. Because the, the drill, because it's going one way and keep going in a circle, and even though you can go reverse, it just don't give you that finish that I'm looking for. So I prefer to use the stick and I only use the drill when it like absolutely necessary or if the valve is in a bad state and it needs a lot of grinding I'll use the drill to give it a first cut and then I'll use my hand to give it a finish. But with this valve we're going to use the stick all the way. This is our old holding tool that we make up and we have the, the valve organized in the correct location that there was when we just disassembled the head. So now, now that we're going to grind the valve, we want to make sure that our front of the engine, which mark here, is going to go back lined up with the front of the engine. And now we're going to take out the valves 
and put them in one by one in the correct location. Now I'm just putting some valve grinding compound and this is some coarse so that I can get a first grind. And if you notice, if you notice, I'm just putting it on just on the face of the valve. You can't make it touch the valve stem, none of this area, just the face, because you don't want to cut any metal from this area and make the valve start to go sideways and not correct tolerance. Now I'm just putting a little bit of oil on the valve stem. And this, this oil that I put here will help the valve to turn nice and free and not getting stuck inside. Okay. What I'm going to do here and I'm going to go in slow motion. It's kind of difficult for me to do it slow because I'm used to doing it so fast. So I'm going to come up, go down, turn like that, come up, come back, go down, turn like that. And I'm doing it a little bit slow. But you got to keep the stick straight with the valve so you, you have to keep the stick straight and sometimes that move out of position you just send tight back but if you notice this valve is on an angle so you can't straighten the stick like that because it will cut more to one side and less on one side you want to just keep the stick straight with the direction of the valve and we're going to do all the valves like this so now I'm going to clean the compound and check how that grinding went and I'm using two separate cloth one just to remove the compound like that and you still want to be careful so it don't go all over in the head or in the valve stem even though we're going to give the engine a proper cleanup the head a proper cleanup and the valve seat looking good so far but now I'm going to clean it with a second piece of cloth and this time I'm cleaning it with a little bit of gas This going really tell me how is it if it was done properly. And you can see on the valve we we'll have a nice seated area there. and all it's equal right round and this is just a first cut and if you look inside there you can see 
it's also seated right wrong properly there's no no cut no burn nothing so that was our first grind so we're going to use some fine and just give it a nice final finish and we're going to repeat the same process with all the valves so all the valve them is grind and seated good so now now the valve them is finished grind and seated good now I'm going to take them back out and put them back in our, into our old holding tool and this will allow us to continue with the repair and checking of the cylinder head So there's all our valve and all of them is nice and seated, it's kind of difficult for you to see but including the exhaust, we're very happy with how they turned out, this means we don't have to change valves. So that's the end of the grinding, now we're going to move to checking the cylinder head. And not just the cylinder head, but all the rest of parts that may need to be replaced. And we're going to make up our parts order list and start to order the parts. And this is just another step in the process of why you have to deal with a lot of cleaning. In terms of cleaning the work area, keeping the workbench clean and cleaning the parts. Because you can't do this kind of painting with dirt and oil and stuff on the parts. And also, dirt is an enemy of the engine. So, this is our engine block. It's, it's polished and painted. And we basically use a, a high temperature heat resistant paint which you can find in any hardware and we have like the upper part of the oil sump the, the valve cover we have the lower oil sump this is the engine the engine block front cover and you can see it have a nice fresh look to it and because we clean and prepare the surface properly, this this won't this color this painting won't wash away when you wash the engine. But if oil or dirt is on the surface, it will only look good until you wash the engine. Then it will just wash away. You have like the water pump here, and something like this where this is the air condition bracket. This coating we give now is just a first coat because we're going to change out all these rubber bushings and then we're going to give it a final coat. You have the cylinder head front cover, then engine mount, engine mount bracket, power, power, um, power, power steering and alternator brackets another engine mount and if you look at this here this is actually the rear crankshaft oil seal housing and we still paint it so even though when the engine put together you won't see this section of it but when you're repairing the engine you're not just dealing with what the eye see you're also fixing the areas where the eye can't see and you have to give that more detail even than the area where your eye can see because you know a lot of mechanic will want to not give the same amount of 
detail to the section where the customer can see externally. So that's one of the reasons why we paint this car. We want the entire engine where you can see when it finished and where you can't see. We want all of it to done right and properly. Now you have this is the oil pump. If you notice, we don't paint it because we're trying to keep anywhere oil and the internal part of the engine. We're trying to keep material away that can eventually fall off and then that will also cause another kind of problem in terms of port and bearings and different things where you don't want not even dust in the oil so that's one of the reasons why we clean this up very good but it will not be painted here I'm, I'm, you have to be resourceful in order to be a number one mechanic, a A1 mechanic so what I'm doing here, I'm just making a piston holding tool. So I'm just measuring up the areas where, we, where I'm going to put the piston. And this don't have to be exact. It's just a holding tool we're making. And we like to do this kind of stuff. Anything we don't have, we like to try and make it first. This is a this is the piston holding tool we make and it's simple. Just out of a piece of plywood. But it's still it's still effective when you get the same quality work. This will help us to hold our piston in position when we're building the re reassembling the engine. There we go. So you can make one home also. You don't have to go and get an expensive tool that you know way out of your budget. This is fine and it can get the work done. Now we have all the parts cleaned up and we're going to start doing some checks on the cylinder head to see if it's good, can it be used, engine block. Camshaft, rocker arm, rocker shaft, piston, connecting rod, crankshaft, and so on. We also have a few special tools and we'll you know, name them and discuss them as we go along that will be needed. And we also have the workshop manual, which you normally need when you're doing a rebuild because you need to get all the technical specifications for the engine and you know back in the days we have a big library full with many manuals but now you have the computer with many software with all the technical data you may need however we will be using the manual today if there is anything we can't find in the manual that we need we'll just Go in the software and look for it. This is the cylinder head. It's all cleaned up and the valves grind. This is the engine block, all polished. And we actually give it 
it's a freshen up with a fresh coat of paint. And we mainly do that because we don't want to go rusty while we're doing the cleaning up and repair. Here we have the crankshaft, the pistons, and we have some of the valve train over here. We have the camshaft, rocker arm, and rocker shaft. And then we have the timing gear, camshaft, sprocket, sorry. And those are just some of the parts we're going to start to check. And over here we have a few special tools. We'll go in a little more detail with them as we go along. Now we're going to check all the parts for wear and damage. There's an important topic I'd just like to discuss for a moment. And it is about the practical experience and learning the theory. At this stage of the repair is where most mechanics start to separate. Where the guys who study they become a little bit stronger and the guys who just learn in the mechanic just learn in the garage they become a little bit weaker it's important for you to go to a training institute while you can learn a lot in the garage and gain all the necessary experience you need you won't gain all the knowledge you need about the theory or the science from the garage. For example, we have the cylinder head made from aluminum and you have different type of aluminum mixture. And then you have the engine block made from cast iron. It's important for you to have an in-depth knowledge why they make the parts out from that type of material, what's the main purpose of, for that parts on the engine, and what the other function that parts do on the engine. This is why you need to study the mechanic. You, you can't get over that. And the, the go, most garages don't really set up in terms of a full training center with a teacher and so on to teach you the theory properly. So that's why we encourage all the young men who want to get into the automotive industry to go in the garage, stay in the garage system for at least four years where you gain at least four year practical experience and not just for your, for your continuous practical experience. And at the same time, attend a training institute where you can learn the science and all the theory behind each individual part. So now I'm going to check the cylinder head and I'm going to check the cylinder head face for any warpage. It can have a little warp, it's not, it, you don't have to cut the head every time because it have a little warp and you really want to do everything possible from avoid cutting the head because you don't want to change the compression ratio especially it's a stock engine you're building so you know you want to keep the compression ratio original as much as possible and this is a cylinder head tool that you use to check the head but this is something it's just a straight edge. There's no technology to it. As long as you have a perfect flat straight edge, you're good to go for checking the head. And we're basically going to check it across here to make sure it, no warp in there. And we're going to do an X. And we're going to check it over there and over there. So the first thing we're going to do is right here 
and when we look under here we don't want to see any any light and that alone telling me this head is in a good shape now I'm going to use the feeler gauge and just check if there's anything there if you like this video don't forget to subscribe to our channel and recommend it to a friend and if you're in the neighborhood feel free to stop by and have a conversation or if you just want to send us your question or comment we will sure reply in our next video thanks again for watching